here I am with a Rocky Mountain Horse Colt and I'm going to demonstrate some very beginning techniques so that you can have success and respect with a young horse such as this. You want to be subtle and calm with your body language but assertive as in to not give any ground if they happen to be more on the aggressive side or uh, if they're going to be on the side of pushy, we want to avoid all of those things with our young horses. First off is disengaging the hindquarters, where I was demonstrating before. If this horse also was moving around a lot, I would be more assertive with him in telling him where to stand, because I want a, a horse on the lead to be quiet and calm and generally be with me. But first things first, when you have your horse on the lead, if you want the horse to stand still and they are not, you have to help them find their feet. When you do this, you move their feet. For instance, if you was wiggling, I would do this. I'm essentially doing a job a boss mare or mother horse would be teaching their young horse. If they were out of place, I would push them either by pinning my ears or biting them or kicking them. That's how a adult horse would deal with the situation of an unruly young horse. So if he weren't moving his hindquarters so nicely, I might actually pretend to bite him with the tail of my lead rope. So there was an example of this coming around and you want to warn your horse, ask, tell, command. I'm going to ask him now nicely. And he did that. I would tell him hey, I'm serious, maybe by swinging the rope and walking with my own feet. I can't tell this horse to move unless I'm moving and giving him energy. And lastly, if the horse does not move, I have to do what a boss mare would do to gain respect and bite them a little bit with the end of my tail of my lead rope. So after I get control of the hindquarters, that's number one. With a young horse, I don't concentrate a lot on moving their body, but I do need to concentrate on the hindquarters because that's their powerhouse. That's where the bulk of their power is coming from. When they push off to move, they push off with that hindquarter. There's a lot of muscle here and down through the leg, and that muscle tone is what we want control of. A horse that bolts or dances is pushing off with these muscles. And as a boss mare, so to speak, we have to be in control of this main muscle group in these two hind feet. So a young horse, I want to be able to touch all over the place. I want them to lead with me in confidence. If a horse decides to shy away from an object or my hands, I would walk with them. I would never try to hold this horse close to me and, and want them to pull against me. What I want to do is if he decides to wiggle around away from my objects, I would stick with him and let him move. That's the best way to teach a horse to accept something. For example, let me grab some a tarp. I wouldn't say that this would be the first thing to bring to your unexperienced young horse, but he is not moving. But I want to show you him moving. And I want to go with him if he does so.
we already have firm, firm respect and understanding to find our feet and to still our feet. Quickening the bag definitely got the, the response I wanted to see where his limits are. And now he's very inquisitive. He did calm down. I want to pet him a bunch with the bag or with my hand, whatever horse is going to tolerate. And if this is too much stimulus, go with an object that's smaller or less noisy. I want to go until he stops reacting, and, and he did. But as you can see, if he's not moving, I can stop the stimulus and reward him. But if he starts to move around, then I stay with him and, and have to judge when he's going to stop or how much stimulus to give. I don't want to go zero to 60 and give him too much to be a fearful of my object. As you can see there, I judged a certain distance from him, and once he stopped moving his feet, I stopped shaking my bag. And that's the, the respect that you want, that's finding the horse's feet. If this horse was unruly, searching my, my pockets for grain, or walking on top of me intentionally, I would want to gain respect by practicing moving this horse away from me, such as disengaging the hindquarters or even backing a horse off of me. As you can see there, once he did what I wanted, I'm moving energy through my rope. He backs off of the energy. I can get a horse out of my space and begin the road to success and respect with this horse as an older horse. Next, I want to demonstrate, like, as if you were catching this horse, if this horse was in the paddock with you, I want to show you some, if this horse was overly aggressive, um, that's the main topic, if this horse uh, did not respect uh, humans, uh, I would want to show this horse um, in any way, safely as possible, not just on the lead, but free in a pen, how I would get them to move their feet, respect my space, um, as if I were giving myself a, a wider berth of a bubble that they are not invited in until I invite them in. Um, so right now he has a bubble uh, within the confines of my lead rope, but now I'm going to expand it to this round pen. What I will be doing is, okay, this horse is, you may not be able to see it, facing his rear end toward me. But what I want to see is, is his attention, ears and eyes and forehand, eyes on me, uh, forehand toward me. And right now he, he's looking at the other paddock over here. that I gave was my feet moved toward him with the extension of a hand here. Um, my hand can have many extensions, a, a whip, a rope, the, the halter and lead, but this is going to be the extension that I can safely touch the horse without getting kicked or having anything else. Um, if a horse was overly aggressive, 
this is where you would want to start in the small area um, to assert yourself. So I'm going to send them off. And you can see here, I am, I am getting big. I'm getting big like a cougar. Like if my hand comes up and over, my hand comes up and over, and I get more, more aggressive toward that horse. I'm actually acting like a boss mare would. I'm going to quicken my feet, stomp the ground, get low, and get like a cougar up over the back of the horse as if. If I'm going to throw the rope, it's going to come up, over, up and over. To facilitate more of an aggressive stance. The faster you move, the harder that this comes down on his back, you know, in a small confined area, the faster and more aggressive you are going to move the horse. He's moving in a sense that he is respecting me. He's moving off when I tell him to. He's not joining up with me as an older horse. An older horse would join up in the round pen. Once I take the pressure off, they will come to me. Um, but right now, you might not be able to see it. He's looking at me, and he is interested in why he's not getting that kind of stimulus. He's wondering, should I walk over to that lady who was just chasing me like a cougar? So when I take the pressure off, I'll take my shoulders and steer them away from the horse. Um, and my stimulus, I might drop this if I want to go over to him. But I uh, chased him around a bit. A young horse might not quite understand the relationship yet. Stimulus on, stimulus off. But now I'm going to walk up to that horse with the least amount of pressure. I'm going to do this. I'm going to side step up to him, let him know I don't have any more energy to send him around the circle. Let them know that it's okay. In a confined space like this, the rope is a great tool. I can, I can get him to move out and to respond to the release of pressure. A horse that learns by soft feel, learns from the release of pressure. Uh, I don't have the halter on him right now, but like when he is learning to give to pressure, I have to release the pressure or release the lead rope. Um, so in this case, I'm, I'm again making friends with him I chased him around, teaching him how to respect me without the halter on. You know, I have to act like the boss mare for just a little bit and then go back to desensitizing this little boy again. But a couple theoreticals. If a horse is going to be in your space, you don't have the halter on. You have to be more aggressive. You have to get a crop or a whip. Uh, you have to get after them more than uh, just allowing them to come towards you with pinned ears or biting or kicking, um, swinging the rear end around. Uh, they. They have to know when to submit. Um, and right now, I can tell that he trusts just a bit to come and stop 
and to be curious of me and to begin the learning process. He's not over the top running around. He's just responding to me as the boss when I move him. So I have the pressure off. Notice my shoulders. Pressure on. Making noise. Movement. Noise. Clucking. Aggressive stance is going to be your main tool. There he is again. Took the pressure off and he's interested uh, for the time being, interested in what I have to offer when I take the pressure off. That's when the horse is open-minded to you as the teacher or he, there's respect and they're ready to learn. That's one of the simple, simple rules a, a baby needs to learn. And if the horse grows up in a sense of wanting to be dominant to humans, they can learn to be dangerous because at this point he's barely 500 pounds but when a horse is over a thousand pounds that's when you're going to have everything fall apart when the horse wants to walk on top of you or get into your pockets uh, jump into your lap when they're scared or even chase you off when they're eating grain or with a pasture mate they're protecting so you do have to assert yourself right away. And that can begin with just disengaging the hindquarters, spanking them a little bit with the end of the lead rope, and really not a whole lot, but just to get their feet moving enough so that you start seeing more respect. Some helpful things to keep in mind you know again horses learn from the release of pressure and a horse has to know we are natural born predators and in this case I want him to know I'm not attacking him all the time but I could easily create fear in a horse if I were acting like a predator all the time if I was always macho I can you can see the reaction there but if I'm more calm, especially when uh, catching him or uh, working with him, I'm going to come up slow. I'm going to send my shoulders maybe to the side, not right at him. See, if I start giving him too much, he's going to become reactive. But as he ages and as he learns, I'm going to show him that there's desensitization and where I don't want his feet to move and we can be friends and then there's sensitization where I'm the boss mare and I want his feet to move. And part of that, part of getting the horse to move, you do have to understand a few body mechanics. First off, a horse does have a line of uh, a, ba a certain center of motion where if I were a predator right right here is this center of motion right where the cinch would go if I'm going to apply pressure whether it be my rope or my body if I apply pressure over here I'm going to send the horse over or forward again sensitiza desensitization and he wasn't expecting this, and the energy came from behind this drive line. This is the center of motion. He went forward, but I'm going to desensitize him a bit here, tell him that whatever motion that was, was meant to love up on him, make his feet stop, rub up on him some more. But if I apply, more of that energy or that dr um, that uh, uh, more of my energy to the front of the horse, if I apply more of the energy to the front of the horse, then I'm going to send him backwards or cause him to turn more abruptly. So here. So I can 
help a horse stop or turn even without the lead rope pressure just by applying some of my own energy to the horse in a certain way. Always work both sides of the horse just in case, because they do have a, a, a split in their brain that doesn't allow information to technically transfer. So I have to do all that desensitization on this side and then do all the desensitization on this side. That was demonstrating moving off of pressure as well in a different way. Not just my energy, but I'm going to apply pressure to the lead rope, tell him to back, just light pressure. And he learns to do that softly when I release that pressure after one step. That's how a horse is going to learn, literally one step at a time. I hope this helps anyone understand working with babies, 